everyone, I'm Mindy. I'm Sarah. And today we're gonna to show you guys around the new 2020 Turbo Stationer 206 and why it's such a workhorse. Sarah's gonna do a walk around with you guys here in the hangar and then we're gonna take you guys on a demo flight. Let's do it. saying the Cessna T206 is such a workhorse and the biggest reason is because of this big beefy engine up here. This is the live homing TIO 540. It's 310 horsepower and there's a lot of power this airplane has. It's great for off airport landings, hauling a big useful load and having some fun. So the 206 is kind of like a baby caravan, especially with this cargo pod. It is removable and it can hold 300 pounds of extra baggage or cargo. So think about your skis, golf clubs, or your roller on bags. It's pretty useful. So the 206's landing gear is a leaf spring steel tricycle landing gear system. It's very rugged and super forgiving, especially for off airport and short field landings. And a great off airport feature is gonna be this brake line, which is behind the strut here. And that's to protect it from any debris or rocks hitting it on landing. Here we are at the 206's flaps. And you can see that the flaps on this airplane are more than half of the wingspan of the wing, taking up large surface area. And this is gonna be for your short field performance and slow air speed handling characteristics. here we are at the cargo door and since we we're just talking about flaps we do have a flap safety switch here and this is to make sure that you don't lower your flaps into your door when you're still loading things back into the 206 so the doors have to be closed and the battery needs to be on for the flaps to operate and then if there is an emergency scenario this you can still egress this door with the flaps down as well the cabin of the 206 is really flexible uh, as far as loading goes. You can either put bags and equipment back here, or you can fold the seat down and lay your equipment down flat. Back here, you can lay your equipment down flat, or what a lot of 206 operators do is they take this aft bench out, just held down by these pins here, and you can just operate this airplane as a really big four seat airplane or a true six passenger airplane. 2016 Cessna came out with the HD model, which is for heavy duty, where we increased the gross weight of the airplane by 189 pounds. So you no longer have to put tip tanks on the airplane, but you still can if you want to get the extra fuel. So this airplane holds 87 gallons of fuel. So with full tanks, you can hold about 950 pounds of useful load. It's pretty impressive. Here we are back at the tail of the 206 by the oxygen port here. So the 206 has standard built-in oxygen for six places because the service ceiling on this airplane is 26,000 feet. And the really nice thing is that the oxygen port is very convenient for the line guys to fill the bottle for you. You don't even need to give them the keys. Okay, so uh, thank you, Sarah, for doing our walk around. Now uh, we're gonna take you guys for a flight and the turbo stationer and show you guys a little bit of what it can do. Here we are, we're going to do a short field takeoff. That's one of the things that the stationer is good at. We're going to take off runway eight and we're going to climb up to a little over 15,000 feet and show off the oxygen system. And then we're going to come back around for a visual approach and a short field landing. Sound good? I think it's a good plan. Let's do it. All right, we're right at the end of the runway. We got 20 degrees of flaps in, our big, big flaps. We're gonna hold our brakes, give full power. We'll add it in smooth, but we do have an overboost protection. Lots of right rudder for a short field takeoff when we add power like that. And looking for 56 knots. Here we are. We're flying. We pass all of our obstacles. We're going to shoot for our VY, which is about 88 knots. 
We do have rider tram, which is helpful in the 206. My right leg is working out right now. <laughs> Especially since we're going up to 15,000 feet. You'll be holding there for a while, so it's really yes. nice to have that. <laughs> so we'll throw the autopilot on. It's going to hold this heading, and it's going to hold 88 knots. I'm going to get trimmed out on our rudder. That way I can give my leg a break. Mindy, do you see that climb? <laughs> Just about 1,200 feet per minute right now. And we can hold this full power climb up through about 17,000 feet. Yeah. So this is the climb speeds we're going to see up to our 15.5. Still holding VY 88 knots through 4,500 feet. And we're anywhere from 1,100 to 1,400 feet per minute. It's just we're kind of still going through some of the thermals. So it kind of yeah. bouncing up and down. Once we get to smooth the air, it'll stabilize. And normally how we're loaded now, it's gonna stabilize around 1,200 feet per minute. And like Mindy was saying, we're not at max gross so with just two of us in the airplane. But even if we were at max gross, I mean, it's still in a pretty impressive uh, climb rate that we're seeing. Probably average maybe around 1,000 feet a minute today. Yep, that's, that's about what I would guess. All right, so now we're level at 10,500. We're gonna stop here for just a moment and both get situated with our oxygen systems. Um, it took us just a little over seven minutes to get to 10,500. Yeah, that's pretty good. That is awesome. That means we held well over a thousand feet per minute the whole way up here. So yeah. how about you get situated first? I'll stay on the controls and then we'll switch. All right, sounds good. All right, and I'm back. All right. So it's really important to get prepared before you get up into the flight levels to have your oxygen on and ready to go. So it's really, <laughs> you look so funny. <laughs> oh, you just look great. <laughs> okay, so oxygen on. Yep, it's pretty simple. So right now we're both adjusting our cannulas. Um, on the cannula, we have a bunch of little dash marks on it and it has a little floater ball and you twist the knob to make the little floater ball inside at the altitude that you're at or in our case where we're planning to go at. So let's go ahead and put it to 16,000 just to be safe. I have rather have a little bit more oxygen. Definitely. Less. And now that we both have oxygen flowing, let's continue our climb. Yeah, the 206, it's a very simple airplane and that does not stop with the oxygen. You literally just have to turn the lever on and you set your cannula to your altitude and that's it. So we're back here at VY 88 knots and we're still seeing about anywhere between 1100 to 1200 feet per minute going up to 14.5. So flying on oxygen, it's, you know, most people think it's a little daunting, but not really at all. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is breathe in through your nose and then out through your mouth. Um, pretty relaxing, actually, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, it makes you focus on your breathing. The only thing that's a little different is that you just kind of look funny. <laughs> yeah. I know, I can't even look at you without laughing. <laughs> okay, we're getting sent out for cruise now. We decided to go to 14.5. Uh, we got flipped around westbound, so we stayed at an even altitude now. And I'm gonna get it leaned out. 75 degrees, rich a peak is what we're gonna go for. The Lycoming engine is only rated for rich a peak. It's not rated for lean a peak. And to get your best power, best performance, is gonna be that 75 degrees on the rich side. Okay, I got us all leaned out. 75 degrees, rich peak at 14,500 feet. And our true airspeed right now is 160 knots. Love so it. not too bad for a single engine high wing Cessna. Um, it, and this plane isn't really meant to be a speed cruiser by any means. It, it really shines with short field takeoff and landing performance and its hauling capabilities, that big useful load that we talked about before. But I, I'm not gonna complain about 162 knots. Definitely <laughs> not, no, that's for sure. 
there's some different reasons for kind of coming up so high at altitude, not only just because you can, you know, it might be to get over terrain or even to take advantage of some better winds up at altitude if you're taking a long cross country. On this 75 degrees rich a peak, we're seeing roughly 20 gallons per hour. That's pretty standard for the 206, about 20 gallons per hour once you get leaned out. And that's kind of at any flight level. It doesn't really matter um, until you get pretty high up towards the service ceiling since the turbocharger thinks it's at sea level right. all the time. You're going to see those same fuel flows whether you're down at 3,000 feet or up here at 14,005, but the difference in going higher and the advantage is that you have a much better airspeed up here. Um, down lower, you're going to really sacrifice a lot of your airspeed, but still be taking that 20 gallons per hour of fuel. Yeah. But and once you come up to 14.5, you gain 10, 12 knots of airspeed with that same fuel flow. So you have a big advantage for wanting to climb. Yeah, it's a turbocharged airplane. It wants to climb high, it wants to fly high. Definitely. So now we're descending, now that we got to see what a flight profile would look like at a normal cruise altitude in the 206, uh, we're going to do what's called a visual approach in the G1000. Um, so not what you typically think about, the G1000 is gonna help us with it and we will show you guys that. But in the meantime, who are you seeing that's 206 buyers? You know, the 206 is a really great transitional airplane. So someone coming out of a 172 or a 182, uh, the, the transition's very seamless. So if you look at the panel of this airplane, I mean, they look pretty darn identical to the 172 or 182. So it just makes coming out of those airplanes so easy. The avionics are exactly the same, uh, which makes it just a great transitional airplane. Yeah, and, and the type of buyers that we're seeing are so diverse. So yeah. It can be how you guys saw it today, a fixed gear plane. You could put it on floats. Some instances, you could put it on skis. Um, it's got a lot of cargo opportunities, so people use it for that, for bush flying, so you can put Tundra tires on it and get into some really tight strips up in Alaska or you know whatever your mission could be. Um, and even buyers around where I live, where Atlanta, maybe don't have that dramatic of a flight profile for it, but they just wanna be able to take four adults in as yeah. many bags as they want to their vacation home. So it just helps you be able to load the plane and not worry about the weight and balance. You know that you can do it. And it just makes it a really versatile airplane for a lot of different missions. So what we're gonna do going into this airport is a visual approach on the G1000. So this is just visual situational guidance. It's not meant to be used for you know IMC conditions or anything like that. It just gives you an extended runway center line and a three degree glide path down to the numbers. It's for every runway at every airport. So even if there's not an instrument approach procedure and you're unfamiliar with that airport, you can load this in just to be sure you're lined up on the right runway at the right airport. Yeah, that's what I use it for all the time for unfamiliar airports. It's just a really good guidance. Definitely. So the autopilot will even fly it for you. So it's captured the glide path that I want. And I just have to prepare it for landing. Yeah, the airplane can treat the visual approach kind of just like an instrument approach. Uh, so it flies the entire thing on the autopilot, which is really helpful too. Lawrence County Station, Arizona, two miles straight in runway eight. Lawrence County. All right, we're going to pop the autopilot off. We pop it off a little bit earlier in visual conditions than we would do in instrument conditions. But we still get our, gli our guidance, so you can still hand fly using the glide path and that straight in line the whole way in. Got the full flaps in, they're like speed brakes when they come out, these huge barn door looking things off of our wing. <laughs> yeah. It initially gives you quite the amount of a balloon, but then it points your nose pretty much right at the numbers and you just fly it right in. And now Mindy's gonna show us how a great short field landing is done in the 206 and get us off in the first taxiway here. Oh, you're talking big for me. <laughs> you got it. And we're just over the numbers. We're just hearing the stall warning horn chirp and we're down. Oh yeah. That was pretty darn good, Mindy. Ha ha ha. 
And we are fully stopped on the runway halfway before we got to that first taxiway. That first taxiway is about 1,800 feet down the runway. Yeah, give or take. And we're stopped about halfway, so full stop in about 900 feet. And let's be honest, you could really step on those brakes and shorten that up even too. But yes. let's, it's nice to be kind to your airplane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you don't need to stop on the brakes, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. But dang it, it's fun to get that thing stopped in a couple hundred feet though. Yeah. <laughs> The only thing that might have been better is if we were on a grass strip. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, so we're going to taxi back and continue to have some fun. And yeah. we've, got, we've got a couple more plants today, but this is where we're dropping you guys off. <laughs> well, thanks for coming along with us for our walk around and our flight. Hope you guys enjoyed it and yeah. stay tuned for some more. Yeah, see you again.